Hi hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to start talking about indirect proportions. Okay. Sometimes they're called inverse proportions. They, they switch up the words sometimes, but they all mean the same things. Okay, so we've talked about direct proportions, and properties of direct proportions are when both variables are increasing or always decreasing. So they increase together or they decrease together. A graph must be a straight line and go through the origin, and that cannot be horizontal or vertical. So that's kind of the things we've talked about already with direct proportions. So now let's go on to inverse proportions. We're going to do this activity in class because it's a hands-on thing, so if you're just watching the video, you can go ahead and skip that for now, okay? So again, direct proportion, both variables are increasing or decreasing. In direct proportion, one variable is increasing while the other is decreasing. Okay. So if we look at when we're playing a card game, okay, if only one person is playing, we'll get that person will get 120 cards. But if two people are playing, then they'll each get 60 cards. If three people are playing, they'll each get 40 cards. Okay. So this is a game you could play with one, two, or three people. Okay. And one of the things is when we're looking at a constant of proportionality, we can see that 1, 2, 3 is going up and 120, 160, 140 is going down. So that's a sign right away that it could be an inverse proportion. So if they were both going up, I'd be like, oh, definitely not an inverse proportion or an indirect proportion. If they were both going down, I'd be like, okay, again, that's, that's definitely not an indirect or inverse proportion. Okay. So if we look at this, though, okay. What is 1 times 120? Well, that's 120. What is 2 times 60? That is 120. And 3 times 40 is 120. And notice these are all the same. And when they were all the same in the direct proportion, we called that the constant of proportionality, right? The COP. Okay. So in an inverse or an indirect proportion, x times y is going to equal our constant of proportionality. And remember, k is just the constant of proportionality. Okay, so we're going to, this table is obviously an inverse proportion because when we multiply them together, we all get the same thing, okay? And if we had to write this equation, well, k is 120, so it would be x times y, oops, times y equals 120. Sorry, my pen is being fussy this morning. Okay, so a little different equation than the direct proportion. So remember, direct proportion is y equals k times x, or y over x equals k. So instead of dividing y and x, we're multiplying y and x. All right. And again, I, we kind of just wrote this. This is the uh, formula for direct proportion. <clears throat> or, I'm sorry, inverse proportion. I apologize. This one is for direct proportion. Okay. And again, the biggest difference between those is we are dividing, oops, dividing, I really didn't spell that correctly, dividing in direct proportions, and I'm just going to shorten that to dp, and we are multiplying in inverse proportions, okay? And by that, I mean we're multiplying and dividing the variables, okay? All right, so again, we're going to look through and decide if each one is a direct proportion or not. So if I look at this, I'm going to rewrite this just so it looks like a fraction. Okay. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this 1 half. Okay. So then we get y equals 10 over x. All right. Now, I don't really like x in the denominator. That doesn't help me a lot. So I can multiply both sides by x. And I get xy equals 10, which is, in fact, the form of a direct proportion. It's x times y equals some number. Okay? So you'll kind of have to manipulate them a little bit to see if they're a direct proportion or not, okay? All right, if we look at this next one, you can actually see, it because it's some number times y equals some number divided by x, that's the same form as this one. So I already know it's going to be an inverse proportion. But just for giggles here, <clears throat> sorry, apparently I'm losing my voice this morning. I'm going to divide by 3 fifths. Well, y is equal to, we're going to copy that flip flop because we're dividing. The 3's cancel out. So I'm left with y equals 5 over x. And again, we don't like x in that denominator, so we're just going to multiply both sides by x. And x times y is just xy equals 5. So this is, in fact, yes, it is an inverse proportion. OK? 
Okay? What do you guys think about this one? Is it an inverse proportion? That is a no, because just like direct proportions, cannot have addition and subtraction, right? So as soon as we see an adding and subtracting sign, most definitely not a direct or an inverse proportion. Okay? No adding or subtracting. All right, we will see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.